Georgia Scorcher at Six Flags Over Georgia was the last stand-up coaster Balger and Mabillard ever built. And could it be their best? Most of the later B&M stand-ups were large and forceful, but Georgia Scorcher does things very differently. This one has modest stats and a turn-based layout. Find out if this is better in this review. Balger and Mabillard's first three roller coasters were all stand-ups that were modest in size. But in the mid-1990s, B&M built a trio of large, record-breaking stand-up coasters. The first would be Mantis at Cedar Point in 1996. The second would be Chang at Kentucky Kingdom in 1997, which now runs as Green Lantern at Six Flags Great Adventure. And the third would be Riddler's Revenge at Six Flags Magic Mountain in 1998. Each one was bigger and more forceful than the last one. But Six Flags Over Georgia and B&M did a contrarian layout in 1999 with Georgia Scorcher. This stand-up would stand just 107 feet or 33 meters tall and feature just two inversions. Was Six Flags being cheap or did B&M learn something? The first three stand-ups weren't as smooth as B&M's later coasters. Balger and Mabillard did fix this with their newer rides. However, the large over-the-shoulder restraints usually rest next to your ears, so it's pretty easy to get headbanging even on their smoother stand-ups if you don't set the restraint correctly, but more on that later. The later stand-ups were extremely forceful. I personally love their power. The positive G's in the valleys and inversions make my legs feel like jelly. It feels like the coasters are trying to shove you through the floor. This sensation alone can be uncomfortable for some, but it can be brutal if you're in the wrong riding position. There are two things that can go wrong. One, you can be sitting down. You straddle a bike seat, and if you sit on this, your groin will take the brunt of the force, which is not pleasant. Two, if you don't put the bike seat low enough, the positive G's will compress your groin against the bike seat anyway. I have a separate video going into more detail, but the key with these stand-ups are to get a few inches of clearance between the bike seat and your groin. This also gets the over-the-shoulder restraint below your ears. It will be jammed against the top of your shoulder, which can be a deal breaker for some, but I find that to be a much more tolerable riding position than getting sudden head banging or a groin slam. What's most telling about these first six stand-up coasters is that half of them have been converted from stand-ups to floorless coasters. While this has made the coasters less intense by stripping them of their unique riding position, it has made the coasters more tolerable for most people. And you could argue a few others would be candidates for convergence if the parks didn't already feature floorless coasters. But I'd argue Georgia Scorcher never needs to be touched. Georgia Scorcher features the smoothest tracking of all the stand-ups. This ride is glass smooth. The ride also features more comfortable G-forces. There are some positive Gs, but they're milder and less sustained, so your legs will not feel like they'll explode. This is why I think it's a shame that B&M hasn't built any stand-ups since this one. The company still offers stand-up models on their website, but it's clear their other models have proven more popular at parks, both from a rideability and capacity perspective. Georgia Scorcher is located adjacent to the roadway into Six Flags Over Georgia. Both this coaster and Goliath, which travels directly over Georgia Scorcher, make quite the first impression. And that's especially the case now that Georgia Scorcher has been repainted to a cherry red color. Before that, the ride's yellow track was looking awfully faded. Georgia Scorcher is located to the left of the main entrance, and for many, it's the first coaster they'll come across when they get into the park. Because of this placement, the park typically opens the ride a half hour early, so the ride is usually a walk-on during this period, but it can build up a wait right after the official opening time as more people funnel into the park. Georgia Scorcher does not have the best capacity. Each train can hold up to 32 guests in 8 rows of 4, and that itself is good. But dispatch times are pretty slow like most stand-ups. Many guests think it's funny to bounce up and down in their seat until it locks in an uncomfortable position, and then the employees have to redo it. So the employees have to go row by row both checking the restraint itself and setting the heights. So if you aren't one of the first ones on Georgia Scorcher, you're honestly best returning in the second half of the day after everyone else is further into the park. In my recent visits to Six Flags Over Georgia, this ride has been running just one train. Now maybe I've just been unlucky, but that's what I've had happen to me. In terms of seat selection, I have a slight preference for the front for the unobstructed view, but I find the forces to be pretty similar throughout the whole train. Once dispatched, you head up the lift hill. 
It doesn't look too tall though because Goliath is right next to it. And in fact, Goliath's returning bunny hills are nearly as tall as Scorcher's lift. After a short pre-drop, you head down a straight first drop. I was hopeful this would give some airtime, like the other straight drops on B&M loopers, but it was too shallow to do so. The pullout did deliver some solid positive Gs though. A few other valleys in the ride deliver weaker bursts of positives, but not as much as this one. The drop is followed by the first inversion, an 81 foot or 25 meter tall vertical loop. It's not that much shorter than the drop, so you slow down quite a bit at the top and get some hang time. That's a pretty cool sensation in the stand up position. You then get some positive G's in the valley, and they're maintained all the way through the subsequent turnaround. And this element is a gray out moment for me, because the G's are sustained for so long. That's followed by a 360 degree upwards helix. This element doesn't do too much in the force department, but it's still mildly dizzying because, if you're like me, you'll be coming off a gray out from the prior turnaround. You then speed over a bunny hill that sharply banks to the right at the top. This looks like one of those speed hills in Fury 325, and it's pretty funky to experience at a stand-up. You don't really get any laterals in this one, but you do get some lift, which is always a freaky feeling on a stand-up. You then whip through the snappiest element on the ride, the corkscrew. This second and final inversion pulls you through it at a pretty good clip, just not as much as the older B&M loopers. Georgia Scorchin has a few more turns before hitting the brakes. The turnaround after the corkscrew is pretty forgettable. Then comes another turnaround, but this one does give a little bit of air time, and then the way you snap to the right also gives some lateral simultaneously. You then twist 180 degrees in the descent, then you bank up and to the left into the brake run, getting some abrupt laterals on the way. Now this is the one spot where you need to watch out for head banging if your restraint is next to your ears. That ends the 3000 foot or 910 meter long course, and it really is impressive how much track B&M squeezed in considering the ride's narrow footprint. So what would I rate Georgia Scorcher? I would give this stand up a 7 out of 10. This is probably the most comfortable stand up coaster out there. It's super smooth, and the forces are intense enough to cause pain. I do prefer the power of the large stand-ups myself, but those rides do admittedly take a lot out of me. I could ride Georgia Scorcher all day by contrast. This ride also is a pretty neat layout for the genre because it twists and turns rather than focusing on inversions, but you still have two solid inversions sprinkled in to get your fill. I think this coaster is towards the middle of the pack for the lineup at Six Flags Over Georgia, but it offers an experience unlike the park's other coasters, and this ride type has become a dying breed in the industry. Who knows if we'll ever get another stand-up coaster. So those are my thoughts on Georgia Scorcher at Six Flags Over Georgia. What do you think about B&M's final stand-up? Do you prefer this, or the larger ones? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.